This exciting one-hour special is our 200th show since our launch in 2007. Produced by Thule Fog Productions and the Pinwheel Fire Group as our 2017 season finale for the Battalion TV Network. Previously on Harrisburg Bureau of Fire, we sat down with driver Justin Zimmerman and Battalion Chief Floyd Wise III to learn more about their history with the Bureau of Fire. BC Wise's shift were called to a structure fire where a woman and a baby escaped without harm. But unfortunately, there was massive property loss. During the structure fire, we joined the recall unit as they were tasked with bringing in extra manpower to help put out the blaze. Oh, shift out. It's 2016 Derry. It's where the, the kids live in right now. BC Wise and the firefighters from his shift picked up a brand new bicycle and presented it to young Jaden after he had lost his in the fire. Welcome to Harrisburg Bureau of Fire. Harrisburg is the capital city of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and rests on the banks of the Susquehanna River. Located in Dolphin County and 107 miles west of Philadelphia, the capital city has a population of 48,000, but swells to over 100,000 during the work week. Limited to 14 firefighters per 12-hour shift, this department still meets the challenges of keeping the city safe. It's 7 o'clock in the p.m. and we're back at Station 2. This week we join Battalion Chief Stephen Miller's shift and get a glimpse into the lives of firefighters Kyle Paul, John Wilburn, Brian Riddle, and Bill Russo. The men await their shift debriefing from Battalion Chief Stephen Miller when Deputy Chief Michael Souter checks in. Downtown Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and the headquarters of the Bureau of Fire. My name is Michael Souter. I am the Deputy Fire Chief, of Harrisburg Bureau of Fire, and I've been here for 27 years. So, Cosmos Boots was uh, kind enough to send us some uh, wear tests, and uh, we're going to take a look at what they got to offer here. So, they sent us some structural firefighting boots, and they're going to let us size them and wear test them for a little bit. You know, first impression, uh, you know, I look at weight. Uh, I don't want to be lugging around uh, heavy stuff on my feet all day, so um, the weight is, is pretty good. I like the, the no-slip uh, style material here, a little bit different than what I'm used to. Um, we'll see how that plays into the pants running up and uh, reinforced no uh, toe piece. That's one of the biggest problem areas I think we have. Uh, is with the toes, they take the beating. Uh, we see a lot of problems there and a lot of problems with the, the, the fronts peeling back. Um, I see how they reinforce the toe here, which is, which is actually pretty nice. See how they go on. Oh, wow, slide on, uh, actually slide on very easily, uh, which is nice. But uh, just at first look, some of the things I like, I definitely like, uh, I like the rigidness here a little bit. Um, it gives me a nice opening to put my foot down in. I do like this, the, I do appreciate the space here for my calf. I do like the straps. I like them, I can get my hands on them. It, it looks like that 
they sewed, they took a lot of effort to sew this in and hold the straps on real tight, which is good because some of the other boots in the industry, we've pulled those off and uh, that's been one of the negatives. They're very comfortable that there's, there's not a lot of extra stuff here, which I think is important uh, because you have a lot of protection there already. Um, they feel really great to touch, nice and soft. Um, the tread plate seems really awesome, uh, nice and deep, so it should clean out pretty well. Um, I like the way they have the toe a little uh, closer together. Uh, you know, you put a lot of emphasis on this part of the boot. I like this part right away. When I put them on, I have a bigger calf. And I like the fact, like, I'll tell you, be honest with you, I put my hakes on yesterday, and I have, I just bought them. And uh, super tight, like, like, I had to, like, drive my foot into them. I could hardly get them off. And I know they'll break in, right? But these, that's what I said on the cameras, these feel broken in. Like I, I put that on and I don't have any, I don't feel it squishing my foot. It's like it's plug and play. It's like this boot I've had on already. Like I've had it in my bot, I've had it in my gear for the past year and a half. I've, it's already broken in, it's now ready to work. Firefighter Kyle Paul sat down with us to tell us a little bit about his career with the department. My name is Kyle Paul. I'm with the Harrisburg Bureau of Fire. I'm currently assigned the front seat of Wagon 4. I volunteered uh, all throughout high school and then four years in college out in Johnstown near Pittsburgh. When the call came in, I was really excited. I worked hard for this and I've always wanted to be a firefighter, especially in my hometown of Harrisburg. The call that made me want to be a firefighter for sure was uh, I was on my way to high school one day and some friends from mine wrecked in front of me. Uh, there was five of them in the car and they were all hospitalized, got flown out and in a coma for a couple days, so that was kind of scary, but I was right behind them when it happened, so I, ever since then, they all lived, so ever since then, I've always wanted to help people and be a firefighter. Brian Riddle and John Wilburn continue to prepare dinner as Kyle Paul cleans and sets up the table. still in Dolphin County, it's where I went to high school. And uh, I actually got hired down in York County, Manchester Township. I was a firefighter there for about five years. Um, and then I applied to Harrisburg City because it's, it's a place I've always wanted to work for and I was lucky enough to get the job and I've been here for three years now. The first call that I really remember was uh, an accident with entrapment and we cut a lady out of the car. Um, I was in charge of stabilization and making sure the car was secure so that we could operate on it without it moving. Um, we got her out and got her to the hospital. And that was the first call that wasn't like, oh cool, fire call, that was exciting. It was like, hey, we helped that lady out. And you know, it just felt good. Um, and that just really has always stuck with me.
A user for years, Prince George's County Fire EMS tests the newly designed aluminum frame electric and lithium battery powered valve with its unmatched airflow for maximum ventilation. Truly the most versatile fan in the market. Find out more about the new line of SuperVac fans at www.supervac.com. 301, 301. The 2600 block of Hopper Street. Possible house fire. Company 30, engine 3233. City Wagon 4, City Tower 1. Rescues 40 and 44. Requesting all units to stand by and station. Tower 1. Confirming working fire from two blocks away. Drop the first alarm. Bill Russo and Brian Riddle make their way to Tower 1. There's a report of a possible structure fire in neighboring Pembroke Township. B.C. Miller jumps in the buggy as Marty Henderson climbs in Wagon 4. B.C. Miller leads the way in the buggy, Bill Russo follows in Tower 1, and Marty Henderson brings up the rear with Wagon 4. Henderson and Wagon 4 tail B.C. Miller's buggy as Tower 1 takes a shortcut. to the fire grounds as B.C. Miller arrives on scene. Engine 30, let me know when you're ready for oh, water. Wagon 4 arrives and gets into position on the fire ground.
Ryan Riddle holds the first line towards the fire. Engine 32, can you charge up five inch, please? Give me two seconds. Engine 30, come here, one. Italian Chief Miller begins to walk his 360 around the structure. Back room, the check report in the search jet. We get this line in here, we get some ladders back here. Kyle Paul runs in to give support to Brian Riddle on the porch. Hey, 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 stop! Firefighter Bobby Jones waits for Bill Russo in the bucket. We gotta get water though. I need water. Keep Marty, get me, get me water. He's standing right now. 32, how's the hydrant? I need water, please. Tower 1, T4. Chief Brian Enterline has arrived on scene. He checks in with BC Miller and makes sure all personnel are tactically positioned. Um, when we were going through a, a horrible time here in the city, uh, the city was on the brink of bankruptcy. We had a, uh, you know, the, the administration at the time was, uh, was not very uh, likable um, for the fire department. Uh, you know, we were kind of like the bastard stepchild, if you will. Uh, we had a, a chief that, uh, you know, was not uh, well liked uh, throughout the ranks of the department, and the uh, the election came and and the the former mayor lost, and it became apparent that the chief and deputy chief were going to be uh, gone and not retained by the current administration. And as as things would have it, uh, I w ended up being the highest ranking officer in the street, and I was tasked with becoming the acting fire chief. 
at the uh, ripe age of 38. Uh, so it was a uh, kind of humbling experience to, to you know, be asked to lead um, it, what is, in my mind, uh, the best department uh, you know, in Pennsylvania. And uh, you know, being the capital city, the spotlight's always on you. Uh, and now to be asked to to lead this department uh, from from you know really the brink of near extinction, uh, the way things were going. You, you know, I, I get constant uh, you know people coming up to me. Oh my goodness, the chief is helping work. Um, the, the the chief's working. Why is he doing that? Uh, it, for me, it's plain and simple. Um, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to make anybody do anything that I can't do. Number one, and I'm going to be out in front of the pack because I'm supposed to be the leader. And I need to set that example of how to work hard. And I, I grew up working hard. I grew up uh, in, in a farming family and, and was cutting wood at, uh, you know, eight years old. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that firefighters coming up understand that I'm not a white shirt sitting behind the, the uh, desk here, that, you know, you have to be able to go out there and still perform the job. And that's, that's why I'm out there doing things um, right beside the troops. I want them to be there. Uh, I want to be there right by their side, uh, giving them that support that they need, as well as working. Look, I love getting dirty. Marty, come on. Tower's ready for water. BC Miller looks on as a Pembroke firefighter douses the exterior of the structure. I don't, is there anybody in there? Chief Brian Enterline checks in with Fire Chief Jason Musser of Pembroke Township to make sure the departments are on the same page. I know, Bob, there ain't a lot of room, and I can't hear you with that shit on your face either. Aim is down, I'm gonna move over. Hit that fire. Shut that hey, 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 pay attention, you don't hit people. Two lines working in the second floor. Uh, one's accessing through hey. side three. Can I get water? Nobody's on the second floor. Hold on. Ah, they're up there. I'm seeing them now. Hey, Brian. What? Be advised, you got a heavy load on this porch. 
I know. All right. Give me some water. I'll use a hand line. Hey, take this. Take that line. Yeah. That line. Oh, my hand got a little thirsty. Alright, go ahead. You doing that? I'm gonna go get on the rehab place. Power one bucket. Make sure you don't go inside past that porch, please. Hey, just be careful, not in the window. SVI Trucks is a fourth generation, family owned Colorado based company that specializes in building custom emergency vehicles and has for over 50 years. SVI Trucks has produced over 1,000 emergency service vehicles that are saving lives every day all over the world. SVI Trucks has gained a rock solid reputation for innovative designs and superior quality. To find out more, go to www.svitrucks.com. My name is Brian Riddle, I'm a fireman here at the Harrisburg Bureau of Fire, and I'm Rider 1 on Tower 1, D-shift. I uh, pulled a line off engine 30, flaked it out in the front yard, uh, got up on the porch, it was coming across the porch roof, just kind of knocked that down a little bit, got a little bit in the water in the window, kind of knocked down the front living room as much as I could. Upon pushing up closer to the door, I noticed there was a propane tank inside the front door, so I backed up about 15 feet and just Again, spraying it to cool it down, see if it was releasing pressure or was it not releasing pressure. Was it empty? Was it full? Kyle Paul met up with me on the porch. I let him know that there was propane inside the front door. He uh, forced the door for me. We worked our way into the front door, knocked down the living room. But uh, at which point we started uh, pushing up the stairwell, knocked down the fire on the stairs. We worked in the second floor st stairway. Fire was coming down across the roof, put that out. Got to the top of the stand, standing stairs landing and wasn't gonna go too much farther than that. Uh, at which point, walked outside, got a change cylinder, and then came back in and started opening back up. Hey, shut that down a second. Give me that knob. No, just hold this. Now do it. Come on, use them big arms, honky. You want to move it? Because I'm holding it too. Let's get this corner right here. Over a little more. There you go. Seven three Okay. Hey, that room's lighting off again, Bob, up front. You don't want to push it to them now. Hold on. EMTs continue to attend to a Pembroke firefighter. Okay, 
Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me get over this so I can help you hold that nozzle. Do you want the other one on? Just just hit the corner. Just the corner, okay? Let's get it back. You need it? Okay, I know. I'll hold back here. You grab the nozzle. You ready? Just the corner, nowhere else. Good, shut it down. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it knocked down for them, okay? All right, go just in the corner. Hit the seat of it, go lower, lower, right about there. Now go up. Good, put it out, stop. We just don't wanna push anything to them, all right? Command, I'm floating everyone on the second floor. Do not bang it until I say so. All right, one bucket, did you copy? Yeah, is everybody out? Or that's part of Can you go ahead and stay on the second floor, please? E.C. Miller sends firefighter John Wilburn into the second story of the home before discussing containment with Chief Brian Enterline. Straight towards the window and above, you got some burning in the soffit. Not that, but you got that. Hey, set that down. Laura, leave it. You hold this. I'm going to hey, I'm going to try and get you that window if you can break it. Can you hit that fucker? Bobby, that's good. Grab this. Put this in that hole then. In that hole. Fire has broken out on the side of the structure under the gable. Chief Brian Enterline checks in on the situation. Chief Enderline and Pembroke Chief Musser try to get some information on the location of the homeowner. Post office. Do I get trying? All I get is voice recording. Talking to somebody. I I don't know. Grab a pole and keep moving more. Okay. No more. Shut down. No. No more.
Battalion Chief Stephen Miller looks into the basement to see the structural integrity of the home. My name is Bill Russo. I'm with Harrisburg Bureau of Fire. I currently am positioned as driver two of Tower One. I was going to say I had issues, but. Uh, what were your issues? Well, I, I had issues because the truck wasn't. Uh, the, the passenger side of the truck wasn't properly picked. So I had to go around and check my compartment. Found I didn't have. Uh, power to the stick. So I had to go back around and check to make sure all the pins were in. Uh, continued up uh, in the truck, up to the roof. I knew we weren't going to cut it because it was vented. It was completely vented. Uh, tried to get water to stang it because the, the, the house was fully involved. Brian went in with Kyle, who's on the wagon. They, they made it in, made a nice, nice knock on it. There was still a lot of fire, so I, I was actually in direct communication with the chief was asking him if uh, I could start getting water, start stanging, stanging it. And after I got that, we stanged it and fire went out. Brian and Johnny are up on the second floor. Copy that back there. Yeah. One, two brothers. There's a ladder in the rear. He's blocking the way to try to go up that one. Right. Three, two. Russo climbs into the second floor at the rear of the structure where he joins Chief Enderline, Brian Riddle, and John Wilburn. See Miller as Bobby Jones get Tower One back in the sky. Yeah, I miss you. Hey, do something. Pull that wall down. <laughs> I got it, I'm coming over here. Kyle Paul digs into the first floor walls as engine chauffeur Marty Henderson directs Bobby Jones in the bucket. Come straight out, you good. If we, uh, well, I'm gonna keep coming here, bitch. I don't. I... 
that just goes to a cross thing. I'm just thinking maybe if we just take this wall right here, we might be able to get in here with some water, you know, just around it. I mean, that's the face goal. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You want to pull more? What? I think I was the only one still in fucking bed. Hey. Can he have that real quick? Hey. I'll give you your line back. Just pass the line so he can. I'm giving it to him. The fire's fucking out. Ain't no big deal. Here. Bill Russo wheels in a SuperVac fan to start the ventilation process of the structure. John Wilburn takes a breather between breaking down walls. Fire departments across the nation are really checking out the new Vulcan structure boots from Cosmos USA. Feel comfortable. Yeah, man, I like that room at the top. Yeah, I do. Super light. I can feel that arch support. I do like the straps. I like them. I can get my hands on them. These are like part of the boot stitched really far down into it. They feel good even all the way up. They do fit good. They feel good. Yeah, I like these. Put these things to use. You can check them out at www.cosmosusa.com with a three year, 100% warranty. Stop hurting your back. Designed to prevent first responder back injuries and extend careers, the walkboard is the newest innovation in patient extrication. It's a dolly designed specifically for transporting people that must remain supine, lying face up. It allows first responders to roll their patients to safety instead of carrying them. Use the walkboard instead of a rib stretcher, scoop stretcher, or other device that requires carrying. Find out more about the walkboard at www.walkboard.com. Kyle Paul, Brian Riddle, Bill Russo, Bobby Jones, and Marty Henderson take five after the fire is put out.
Brian Ennerlein and Fire Chief Jason Musser of Pembroke Township work as fire investigators and dig through ash in an attempt to find the source of the fire. It's early, in the a.m., by the time the crew arrives back at the station. Yeah. <laughs> 